What is up guys, it is Brody here, back again with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about new Crash Bandicoot game that's coming out on October 2nd this year. So yeah, let's get on right with the video. So Crash Bandicoot 4 is about time is the long-awaited sequel to Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped. And judging by the trailers, gameplay and other information, it looks like it's going to be worth the wait. And in this video I'm going to be talking about my thoughts and opinions on Crash Bandicoot 4 so far. So let's So Crash Bandicoot 4 looks like it's going back to the traditional style of Crash Bandicoot games, being a linear 3D platformer, with a few extra stuff added, which, don't worry, I'll get to in a bit. It also looks like Crash 4 is going to be having a similar graphical style to the Spyro Reignited trilogy, which, funnily enough, is by the same developers, being Toys for Bob. Which, so far, I'm really liking, and I think it suits the style of Crash Bandicoot. And if, we, if I were to choose between the Insane trilogy and Crash Bandicoot 4's graphics, I'd say I like both the same amounts. Although the facial expressions that are being shown in the trailers of Crash Bandicoot 4 are making me appreciate it just that little bit more. I've already touched on the gameplay a little bit in the presentation thing about it staying true to traditional Crash and all that, but in this game it looks like they're expanding upon the formula with new features such as rail grinding, rope swinging, and wall running. But I'm not stopping there because They've also introduced a few new mechanics to the game, being the four new characters known as the Quantum Masks, which they all have their own unique names and personalities, apparently. But we'll see once the game comes out. We've already seen one of them, but... Yeah. And they will each have their own little abilities that will help Crash throughout his journey. Which is also a very welcome addition to the game, as it spices things up when it comes to the platforming. But that still isn't it, because they're also adding multiple playable characters with their own unique playstyles. Like Dr. Neo Cortex using his blasters to turn enemies into platforms, and Dingo Dial who uses his vacuum gun to move and throw objects around. It all looks fairly interesting, to say the least. Okay, now looking at the story, this game takes place immediately after the events of Crash Bandicoot 3, where Entropy and Cortex escape this timeline they were trapped in in the last game, and then decide they want to take over all the dimensions and timelines, which means Crash has to go out on a journey to stop Cortex once again. It's a fairly simple story, but it works. And not only that, let me open my book again. Not only that, the quantum masks are also used for gameplay and they're also a part of the story. They are needed to stop Cortex and restore everything, which is a good way to incorporate them into the plot. Book closed. So those are all my opinions on Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time so far. It looks like it's shaping up to be a really good game and a really good follow-up to Crash Bandicoot 3, which is my favourite Crash Bandicoot game in the trilogy, might I add. My favourite game of all time is CTR, but I digress. But, yeah, I'm, I definitely cannot wait to do a playthrough on this series, on this game. And, yeah, this has been Brody. See you later. Bye-bye. Hey there, guys. So, this isn't part of the script, but... I just wanted to prove my excitement for this game even more, because I've done a couple of drawings on the art of this game, like... There's my first version, which is alright. You can barely see the writing. 
But yeah, it looks okay. And then there's the better version I drew, which... If I can get a good angle on it. Which I really like. It, I'm pretty impressed with it. And yeah, it's probably the best drawing I've done so far. That's really all I wanted to say.